Hello, and welcome to the Tabletop Bellhop Express Check-In. Today I'm recapping Tabletop Bellhop Live, episode 29, Lost in Translation. What to do when you've got a bum rulebook. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. <coughs> tabletop Gaming Weekly, where we look back at the games that hit our tabletops in the last week. Now I'm going to start off with our Gloomhaven recap first this week. Friday night, it was just Deanna and I as Tori and Kat had cancelled due to illness. Don't worry, they're on the mend and we'll be recording the next show with a full player count. As we discussed last week, whenever we are short a player, we're going to be streaming the remaining players playing a random dungeon. And that's exactly what we did last Friday. Deanna's Vermling and my Craigheart managed to fight through the foggy alcove and into the infected burrow where we almost fell to some oozes. We fought on to the frigid tunnel where there was a tense battle with a Savis ice storm. It was a close fight and we barely came out on top. Now remember, you can watch us stream our Gloomhaven games every Friday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop. Now this past week, I finally got Arkwright off my pile of shame and played it not once, but twice. First up was a two-player learning game with Deanna, followed, with a, followed up by a four-player game at the CG Realm, a friendly local game store, with three gamers new to Windsor who were looking to play heavier games than they usually see featured at local events. I was happy to oblige. Arkwright is an engine-building game set at the turn of the century and the dawn of automation. Players are inventors who are managing two to four startup companies in England, with the goal being to have the most valuable block of stocks in their own companies by the end of the game. Now, this is a heavy economic game where players are opening and closing factories, hiring workers, managing demand, developing quality, automating manufacturing, paying wages, developing distribution networks, and even more. Now, both games I played use the Spinning Jenny version of the rules, which is a somewhat less complicated, shorter, and lighter version of the full Waterframe version of the game. Now, I have to say, lighter does not mean light. Now, I greatly enjoyed both games. Arkwright is excellent, and if you dig heavier fare, I suggest checking it out. Now, while I was dungeon delving and figuring out Arkwright, Sean, my podcast co-host, was playing a bunch of the DC Comics deck-building game from Cryptozoic with his son. Now, both of them have really been enjoying this game. Now, the best part for Sean has been seeing his son grow into being able to more easily handle some of the more complicated math in the game. For example, endgame scoring. And I've got to say, it's great to see the game having an educational impact. Now this past weekend, my wife and I had a night away from home where we stayed out in beautiful Kingsville, Ontario, enjoyed some fantastic food, some good beer, and a couple of games. The first game was Onitama, which we played the app version on my Android phone. Now while the Onitama app is fantastic, and I've got to say a near perfect representation of the board game, I find I much prefer the physical version. It's something about the way my brain works that I have a lot easier time visualizing my moves and planning ahead with physical pieces. Now, only Tano on the app was okay, but the game Deanna and I were really looking forward to trying out was War Chest from AEG. Now, she gave me this for my birthday, and I've been looking to forward to playing it since. War Chest is an abstract, somewhat chess-like bag builder. Each player gets four units for their army and puts coins for these units in a bag and then draws out three. Now these coins are multi-use and they're used to play and recruit new units or move, bolster, and attack with units already on the board. Now the board has control zones on it and the goal is to capture six of those control zones to win the game. Now, so far, we both really enjoyed the game, but at this point, we've only played three games, and all three of those games were with the recommended starting armies. So I can't say much more than that about the game at this point. I do expect this one will see a lot more play in the future, and I'll be sure to let you know my thoughts when we play more. Now, I did get in one more game this past week, and that was a game of Star Wars Destiny with my oldest daughter. 
Now this was our first time using decks we constructed ourselves. And I gotta say, playing with the tournament legal deck was way more enjoyable than just playing with the starter sets we've used in the past. Overall, I still really enjoy this two-player deck and dice builder, despite its collectible nature. As usual, this weekly look back only scratches the surface. For more discussion about these games, be sure to check out the full podcast when it goes live, Tuesday mornings at 2 a.m. Eastern, both here on YouTube and on your favorite podcatcher. Couple of announcements. Sean, Deanna, and I will be out Breakout Con, downtown Toronto, March 15th to 17th, and I am so hyped about this con. This was by far my best con experience of 2018, and I expect this year to be even better. Now another con that Deanna and I will be attending this year is Queen City Conquest, or QCC, in Buffalo, New York. Now this con isn't until July 12th to 14th, but they're currently having a 30-day sale, where all badges are 25% off. This launched on February 15th, and I've been told that this will be the last time badges are on sale before the con. Ask the Bellhop. We're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. This week, we're talking about what to do when you open up that new game, all excited to learn it, get it to the table, but find inside a terrible rulebook. This is based on a question that Charles Baroche asks. Why is it that no one seems to know how to write gaming rules that can be understood clearly? I spend a lot of time on BoardGameGeek or tracking down a gamer who can teach. Well, Charles, I have to say, I don't know. I I don't know why no one seems to be able to write rules that can be understood clearly. What I do know is it's not intentional. Game publishers do not intentionally write bad rules. Quite the opposite. Publishers want the rules to be as clear and as easy to understand as possible. They want you to pick up that game, put it on the table, and learn it quickly. They want the rules to be easy to read, and they want you to be enjoying and playing their game. Now, while I can't tell you why we're getting bad rule books, what I can do is offer some suggestions about what to do when you find yourself with a game with a bum set of rules. Now, my first suggestion is to look for instructional videos. Learning games by watching a video is still pretty new, but man, it is extremely popular. For many people, this has become the primary way to learn games. People will just bypass the rule book completely. Now, one of the most well-known channels for how to play videos is Watch It Played by fellow Canadian Rodney Smith. Rodney produces excellent quality videos, both on his own and for game companies, that I find great for learning games. Now, I'm also a fan of Richard Hamm and his Rado Runs Through videos. He not only teaches the game, but goes through setup and a few turns of each game while teaching the rules. The one thing to note, though, with Rado is that he teaches everything for two players only, though he does explain where the rules differ for more than two players. Gaming Rules by Paul Grogan is my other go-to for video tutorials. In addition to full rules and setup, Paul's channel also includes a number of excellent reviews. Now, there are lots of people out there doing game teaching videos, even us now. You can check out our Gizmos video right here on YouTube. What I suggest, though, is trying out a variety of channels and finding the ones you enjoy the most. Now, if you do find one you like, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Not only is it a good way to say thank you to the content creator, it also helps get their videos more views and break through the YouTube filtering algorithms. Now, up next, I want to talk about player aids and rule summaries. Now, I love it when a publisher includes rule summaries and player aids in the box. Please, please do this more. Every publisher that does this, I thank you. Sadly, though, it's not common. And when there's no rule summary in the box, that's where I run over to BoardGameGeek.com. Almost every game I've ever bothered to look for has at least one rule summary created by fans on BoardGameGeek. When you find a game that has lots of them, what I tend to do is look for the one with the most thumbs first, but I always compare a couple of them to find the one that works best for my group and and my way of learning and teaching. Now, another source of really impressively designed summary sheets that look great and work great is the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Now, they have a ton of resources for almost 300 games so far at the time of this, this recording. 
Now, these resources include rule summaries, reference sheets, reviews, and recently they've started to add foam core box insert plans. Very cool. Now, Sean did note on the full podcast that both of these sources are often worth checking out, even when you have a good rule book included with your game. There's something to be said for a good player aid or summary sheet that's able to condense even a well-written rule book down to a page or two. Now, while looking for rule summaries, be sure to check for updated rule books themselves. It's rare to find a publisher that doesn't have a PDF version of their game rules online. And often they'll release updates to these rule books. So it's worth checking the publisher's websites to see if the version in your box actually matches the latest version of the rules. Nowadays, I'm also seeing a growing trend of games that don't even include the rules in the box, where you need to go online to get their latest version. Now, Fantasy Flight did this with Keyforge, which some people are love and some people hate. Now, besides actual websites, there's probably an app for that. First up, there's actual app versions of many of the most popular games out there. And these can be great for learning how to play a game, as most include step-by-step -step tutorials. Now, along with game apps, there are a growing number of what they call game helper apps or companion apps coming out. Now, these are coming out both from publishers and fans. Now, I found these are great for finding questions to your rule answers. Many of them include FAQs and updated versions of the rules and multiple examples. Now, there is one new thing that is starting to hit the market now, just now, and these are apps designed to teach you how to play games. Now, Dized is the new hotness in this market, and it just had a very, very successful Kickstarter campaign. Now, Dized promises you'll never touch a rule book again. Now, I have to say, it's not there yet. What they have now seems to be nothing more than indexed rule books and searchable FAQs for the games they support. But they are promising a lot, and I think it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Now, overall, I personally still think one of the best ways to learn a game is to have someone who knows it teach you. Now, while we do have a couple of podcasts on how to become a better teacher, the topic of how to find your own board game Yoda is a topic for another day. For more in-depth discussion on this topic, be sure to check out our full podcast, Tabletop Bellhop Live, Episode 29, Lost in Translation. Do you have a gaming or game night question you'd like us to tackle on a future Ask the Bellhop segment? You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or you can head over to the website tabletopbellhop.com and just click on Ask the Bellhop. Now remember that we record a new episode of Tabletop Bellhop Live every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern and we would love it if you joined us in the lobby, our live chat room. Now, the edited podcast version of that live show gets released every Tuesday, and you can find it on YouTube or on your podcatcher under the Tabletop Bellhop Live. Now, if you enjoy the content we're providing, please consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com forward slash tabletop bellhop. Thank you very much for joining me for this episode of Express Check-In. You can always find us all over the web in social media as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, or drop by our website at tabletopbellhop.com for more great gaming content. Be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking over here, and check out our latest video by clicking over there. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Good night, and game on.